Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right. Welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm having a ball screwing with you a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you are. And uh, you threw me off at the beginning of the show. Uh, you know, I wonder for the people that only listen to the podcast, like, I wonder if they catch that. Like, you guys know there's a video version of every one of these podcasts, right? It's pretty funny. I fuck with Nathan almost relentlessly. Where can people go if they want to check out the videos? Ooh, they'd have to look at, they'd have to search YouTube for Sales Gorilla. Sales Gorilla. Okay, cool. Last week, we talked about some of the changes that are going to be coming into the new year. And this week, I, you've got kind of like a, a hard learning episode, but I want to have fun with it. But you said that you wanted to talk about upgrading your client base. And that sounds like a lot of work and it sounds super boring. And I'm not sure that I want to approach it from that angle, but I'm going to ask you right off of the bat um, why I'm comfortable with the clients that I have. And even though Sometimes it feels like I'm beating my head against the wall. I get paid good money and I know exactly what I'm doing and I have decent relationships with people. Why should I threaten messing that up? Why is it important to be upgrading uh, my, my client base? Well, if you're okay with good enough, then you should just settle and you should just keep the status quo. I mean, like, let's, let's get real about it for a minute. Either you're growing and evolving or you're not. And I think there's a lot of people in the business space that, oh, the business is just humming along, right? It's, it's good. It's okay. It's okay enough. Uh, cool. I think there's a time and a place for that. I think there's an ebb and a flow. Like I said in the last episode, my window's about 18 months. I get really excited about a new thing. And then I fucking plow through it. And by about, I don't know, month 10 or 11 or 12, I'm starting to be like, okay, I've talked about this already. By the time month 18 hits, right, that gives me a six month or so window, maybe a little bit longer to kind of be comfortable. But for me, my ebb and flow needs to continue or I stagnate and get pissed off and want to just fucking burn the thing down and go do something else. I think there's a lot of people who have businesses that, you know, they're just kind of riding along. You said it in the last episode, all this told new change in my business the last few months that me and Landon and Adam have like walked you through something you totally didn't even understand. You went back and talked to all your clients and all but one of them were like, nah, we're good. Okay, cool. Well, if you're working with, eh, we're good people, then keep doing what you're doing. Or continue to grow and evolve and stay interested and continue being curious and continue learning about what you do and how you can apply it and continue to be better and better and better at what you do and have cooler and cooler and cooler people to work with, or, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. So before we jumped on the podcast, you used an analogy of a poker hand and that was what made it click for me. So do you mind sharing that with the listeners? Sure. So the way I see, and this actually goes back to when I was doing the corporate finance sales gig. Um, there's only so many hours in a month and that, that kind of work only allowed for a certain number of clients to manage. And I don't want to like, if you're a service business owner, if you're a consultant, if you do copywriting or build websites or whatever, you probably can't handle 400 clients a month. But in that industry, somewhere between 400 and 600 clients was what an individual could service to an extent, like good enough. So if you've got a book of clients of 400 and it takes all your time, eight hours a day, five days a week, all but one or two days a month to go get new clients, right? Because there's attrition and shit like that. You only have so much time to work with your clients. So when you hit that number, whatever it is, you hit a ceiling. I don't know about you, but I want to eat more better next month than I did this month. And my next vacation, I want to be better than my last vacation. And the next house that I build, I want to be nicer than this house, right? 
want more, but you can only do it with so much. So the way that we used to do it, we had a, a process where we would grade our client book monthly, quarterly, and annually. And we're always swapping out C's and B's for more A's. Right. So if you think about this in the term of in the terms of poker, five card stud, you get five cards. That's the five cards you got. You can swap out two of them or three of them or four of them if you hold an ace, but you get to do that one time. Well, think of your business as an ongoing game of poker. I don't know about you, but I want five aces. Right. I want the five best clients that I can have or whatever number of clients you can manage at any given time. The reality is, is most of us have a four or a seven, and a nine, and a jack, and maybe we've got a king or a queen, right? We've got a, maybe you've got a full house. Maybe you've got two aces and three eights. Fantastic. Well, one of the ways to look at growing your business is to swap out the lower value cards or lower value clients, as it were, for higher value clients. And if you look at your business from that perspective and you're constantly looking at who it is that you're working with and you're aware of your growth curve, right? I'm interested in certain aspects of this business that I didn't used to be, right? And there's certain aspects of this business I used to be interested in that I'm not any longer. Well, if you allow that to lead what you're interested in, what you're actually curious about, what you're jazzed about, and you look at your client base and you go, are these people going to be this awesome? What, however awesome they are. Maybe, maybe right now you've got a 10 of diamonds as a client. And you're like, they're pretty good, right? They don't cause me a lot of headache. They're not fucking amazing. They don't pay me a million dollars a month, but they're pretty good, right? I'm good with having a 10. Well, in three months or six months, if they stay the same, are you still going to be happy with them? Maybe, maybe not. If they're a three, they're probably not any good right now. And you probably know. And if you're honest with yourself, you're going, fuck, I wish this was like a jack or a queen or a king. Here's to wrap this up. If you look at your business kind of like a, a game of cards and you've only got so many cards and you can constantly be swapping them out, would you swap out a better card for a not as good card? Would you swap out an okay card for another okay card? Maybe you've been doing that. Guess what? You've got the opportunity. You're the only one that gets to choose who it is you work with. Swap out the lower value cards for higher value cards and build a better hand. Okay. If we're ever playing poker and you have five aces, I'm going to look at you sideways. Just saying. You better. <laughs> okay. So you've sold me on this idea. How do we go about actually implementing it? Well, it starts in an area that a lot of people aren't very good at. Most people are really good at defining what they don't want. So let's start there. Define all the shit that you don't want in your business that you have to do day in and day out, the kind of clients that you don't want to define all that. And then look at that and go, okay, cool. What would the opposite of that be? And then begin defining what it is that you do want. And then we need to grade our clients. And the way that I recommend doing this is initially on a scale of one to 10. Just put all your clients down and just off the top of your head, rate them what you think, one to 10. One is absolute dog shit. 10 is perfect, right? Now, we're going to take that a step further and we're going to start grading them on how easy they are to deal with. We're going to grade them on how long we think that this working with them is going to play out, meaning how many months after months after months are they going to continue paying us if nothing changed, right? Then we want to grade them on are they in my way or do they stay out of my way? Do they try and micromanage me or do they let me totally do the thing that they hired me to do because I'm the genius, right? And then we're going to grade them on if money was not actually an object and I didn't want or need the money they pay me every month, would I do what I do for them for free? One to 10. I want you to grade all your clients like that across those different aspects. And you might want to take a day or two, right? Between you put it down. Oh, I love working with Bobby. She's awesome. She's a nine, right? And then come back to it in a couple of days and start grading her on all those other categories. And pretty soon you find out what you thought was a nine is actually a seven. Seven's not bad, but there's a lot of room for improvement. And if you look at your client base from that standpoint and actually grade them, you probably got a lot of room to grow. How much responsibility do I take? 
of the clients that I have right now. I'm glad you brought that up because this is where we're going. You're going to find out that the client book that you thought you had that was all sevens, eights, nines, and a couple of tens is actually like some fives and some sixes and a few sevens, maybe a nine. This is the opportunity to look at ourselves and go, okay, cool. If I'm getting what I want, even though I don't really love that, why is that happening? Now we get to start going, okay, cool. Do I deserve better than that? Do I deserve more than that? Am I worth more than this? Am I worth more than that? What's my time worth? I've been doing this thing for nine years. Should I really be charging somebody like 30 or $40 an hour for it? Probably not, right? And it comes back to who you are and then you can match that up with where you're headed in the next three months, six months, 12 months. Are you really in love with what you're doing? Are you curious every day? Do you jump out of bed to be able to go do the thing you get to do? No? Cool. Maybe that's why you've got a book of clients that are all, eh, they're okay. So one thing that I experienced, and this was, again, man, people that listen to the podcast, they probably think they get a lot, but I'm telling you, working with Landon one-on-one is amazing. But one of the things that you made me do a couple of months back was, and the, and the reason why I asked this question was you said, well, what kind of content, what kind of marketing message are you putting out? I was complaining because all of the people that were coming to me needing copywriting, they were like, oh, we're ju- we just built our website and we need a sales page. Or, yeah, we, we've been writing our own emails and now we want to hire somebody else to write our emails. And I was like, okay, cool. And then sticker shock every time I tell them what my price is. and uh, maybe they want a sales page, but they're not running any ads to it yet. So they can't justify the price that I'm going to charge. And you said, well, your messaging, what is your messaging? And I said, well, all my messaging is trying to sell people on why they need to advertise, why they need a sales page. And you said, okay, well, what about the people that already know that? What is the messaging that's going to resonate with them? And for them, it's people that are sick of paying exorbitant fees on click-through rates, people that are sick of their cost per acquisition being so high. And I wasn't even talking to those issues. And so for me, it was all about, well, stop talking to the people that are down there. If the people you're trying to, uh, uh, you know, are you're trying to attract are way up here, why aren't you talking to the people that are way up here? And that was a big slap myself in the forehead because I felt like a big giant dummy. When we're so close to our forest, it's really hard to see it right? I think there's two groups of people. I think there's a group of people that just totally know that their client base is, eh, it is what it is. And I think there's a bunch of people in another group that think their client base is pretty rad until they get honest with themselves about it. I think most people by and large settle, right? They sell the thing that they think their market wants to buy. And they don't question that because it's the truth for them. This is the thing that I do. This is what I sell. This is who that's for. And they forget that. But as we grow and evolve and and change, guess what? So does, or so should, so ought to, so could the people that we're working with needs to adjust as well. And if our market message stays the same as it has been, guess what? You get more of what you've been getting. So if you get honest with yourself about what your client book actually looks like, if you graded them, right? The reason that I do it one to 10 is because anything below a D really like, did you even show up at class? Right? So anything on a client book that's less than a six, like you shouldn't have them. Like, unless you just suck at what you do, right? You shouldn't have any F's or D's having C clients. There's a time and a place for it. If you're really good at what you do, you should have all A and B clients. Well, then we get to like the, well, this client's an 8.5, right? They're a B plus, right? Once you're able to grade your clients on that, guess what? Then you get to go, okay, cool. If I was able to do the coolest fucking thing for my clients and just blow their socks off, what would that be? That's what you actually want to go do. Well, guess what? If you go do that with some of your clients, they're going to go from C and B clients to B and A clients. And guess what? Now your market message is different. You're not speaking to people that, well, you need to go advertise so you can get people to your sales page that you don't have yet. So, hey, I'm your guy. Guess what? It's fucking expensive. And they get, they're like, what? We can't do that. 
But when you start talking to somebody and saying, yeah, you've had your sales page up for seven months and it converts at what it converts at and you've run the kind of traffic that you've run and it converts here. My bet is I can beat the pants off of that conversion rate and bring you better clientele. Do you want that? Yeah, we actually would love that. Cool. Here's how much it is. Really? That's all? And I'm busting your balls right now, Nathan, because I know that's happening. Right? <laughs> this is the process. Look at who you've got. Ask, is that the end all be all that you want to work with? Grade them and be honest and then look back at it and say, okay, cool. If I wanted to speak to somebody who was an A instead of a B in my marketplace, who would I be talking to? If you're paying attention and you're listening to this, this podcast as it's coming out, we're in the middle of doing that. We spent the last year talking about client acquisition. Now we're talking about client creation, client retention, whatever you want to call it. What's next after you've got the clients? After you've got the ability to get clients, what comes next? Swap out your cards for better cards. So two things come to mind. Number one, I've watched people do this. I've watched some of the gurus that I follow. I've watched how their product one year attracts certain people and then their product the next year maybe fulfills the same need but it's for the people that have evolved with them mm -hmm. and then the third year it's for the people that have evolved even further yep. um and so obviously you take some of those people with you as you're as you're changing you're like okay some of these people are going to come with me because they're evolving with me i don't want them evo to evolve past me but what about the people that they're saying they're pushing back in their mind saying well, if I take it to the next step, I'm going to alienate half of my business. Do I really want to alienate these people? They need what I do. Um, they, I'm the only one that can do it for them. And even though I know they're not willing to grow with me, I feel an obligation to stay stuck at their level because they need me or because I'm afraid that I won't be able to replace them because I'm known for doing this other thing. How do I transition to being known for doing something that I haven't even done yet? You just brought up like seven different points that now we need to talk to, but we're going to talk to one of them. You said a word. I feel obligated. Cool. Well, if you do a thing and you've done a thing and it serves market and they need it and they're never going to grow with you beyond it, hopefully your shit's productized and you can just say, here's the thing you need. Go have fun. Right. I'm doing this other thing now. What the real question is, is, okay, I've got this book of clients and I want to grow. I want to work with a, a higher caliber kind of client. I want to work with somebody that's interested in like the cutting edge shit that I'm learning about, even though I'm an expert for 18 years at the thing I do. I want to work with them. How do I transition? Well, you speak to your clients and you speak to your marketplace and you let them know where you're headed. And any good marketer will put some things out and see how the market responds. Just make sure that you're not speaking to a very small piece of the marketplace. You want to have enough of, you want to have a, a, a broad enough spectrum of feedback to get a sense of, oh, cool. Landon's been talking about client acquisition. Now he wants to go talk about like using sound and, and healing and stuff like that. Might be too big of a gap, right? Maybe you just say, fuck it, and you jump off the cliff and build the parachute on the way down. Maybe you don't. I'm not, pre I'm not big on, on building a parachute on the way down, right? You got a 50-50 shot. And I don't want anybody to splat when they hit the ground. The better way to do it is, is go, okay, cool. So if that was the thing that I've done and I've been doing for a long time, what would the next cool thing be that really interests me, that really kind of lights me up? Talk with your fucking clients. That's what they're for, right? And then if you decide to head in that direction, you start mentioning it through your shit posting on Facebook. Totally busting your balls, right? <laughs> and as you begin to un unfold this new-ish message of what you're kind of heading towards, you'll probably, if you've got a client base that's paying attention, you'll probably get some people reaching out and saying, I'm not there yet. Like, what what about me? Like, what's going to... And then there's another aspect. And yes, I'm going to leave that as a cliffhanger because there's a way to handle that, but you don't get that on the podcast. The other piece is it's some of the clients that you're working with, you just don't want to work with anymore and you actually need to fire them. Most people fire their clients and create enemies in the marketplace. 
there's a way cooler, way easier to to fire a client and have them thank you for it and not feel like they've been fired and create an advocate in the marketplace. Again, that's something else you got to come a little bit deeper into my world to get. We're going to keep talking about that deeper part. Okay. Well, actually, we are out of time for this week's podcast. So even if you weren't being selfish with your secrets, we don't have time to dive into that anyways. But I feel like, again, I feel like you give away too much on the podcast. And I I think we're probably guilty of that on this episode as well. Um, But if people enjoy the podcast and they do want to talk to you about going a little bit deeper, um, I know that working one-on-one with you over the last six months has completely just changed my business and my life for the better. If other people are like, well, Nathan sells that with conviction. I want to get a little bit of that. How can people find out about going deeper with Landon Porter? Ooh, I like it. We, we might need to create a tagline for that. Um, or around that, send me an email, send me an email at LP at the sales com, and just put in the subject line going deeper. Nice. All right, Landon, the, another fantastic episode, man. I appreciate you, you taking the time and until next time, man, we will catch you later. If you liked the, this episode of the podcast, you can find more of those at sales Peace out, Cub Scouts. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I legit don't like, and I'm sure it's mutual.